This video is about sharing my experience in creating a curator instance in Google Cloud. There are some areas that I found ex very different from Amazon and AWS, and this has nothing to do with actually with curator itself. So I'm going to try to explain what I struggle so you don't have to. Now, the first thing is that you need to have already have your account and all your access created for Google Cloud. Uh, you should have your SSH keys or you're already generated. Uh, you should have your uh, IPs whitelisted, the ports open, all this standard stuff, right? If you don't have that, if you cannot SSH into a uh, Google Cloud platform, you shouldn't start deploying Curator. You should fix that and then get here. Second point is that the documentation for doing this is uh, inside the actual process. And we'll see where that link is. It's a getting started link, but it's unfortunately after you have started. So I strongly recommend you to Google configure Curator Console Google Cloud, and then you'll get to this document. And I really encourage you to read this one very, very carefully. So we're going to start by uh, creating a project I already did. What is this? Let me translate this step number one. Basically, it's saying that project name, keep it very short, because this thing keeps adding the zone and the different characters. And if you get to 64 or 63 of those, then your installation will fail. So keep that both the, the VM image and the name of your uh, marketplace, uh, not marketplace, your project name very short. Okay, so that's the first step. Let's actually do that. So I'm logging into my Google Cloud Platform account, and in here I have already selected my curator marketplace uh, image that I'm going to use. In your case, you will click here to create a new progress. And again, make sure that that name you choose is actually as short as you can possibly have it. Now that you have done step number one, here we're going to go to step number two. So what you do is that you click here on this hamburger thing and you scroll down to where it reads BPC Network. I'm going to pause the video because I don't want to expose any of the IP addresses and stuff that we have there. So you're going to click in this Create BPC Network link. So in my case, I already did it. It's a JBrabo demo. And uh, the subnet that I created was a JB test. Uh, and the only other thing that the documentation says is that keep this default to no server policy. You click create, and you have done step number two, uh, two a, uh, three a rather. My bad. You have done step two a, b, c, and d. Now we're going to move into step number three. To do that best navigation is to go to the hamburger and click on compute engine and you can actually select from here metadata okay and in here I'm not gonna do it uh, but you need to click here on their SSH keys well I can cover all the items in here uh, so here are, you are in SSH key, you're going to click edit. So you scroll all the way to the bottom and you're going to click in here where it reads add item, add item. And when you do, you're going to paste here the SSH key that you have generated before. I'm not going to, I did a video that how you generate SSH keys and this is slightly different in Windows and Mac. So watch for that video if you have never done that. You're going to paste this, and the SSH keys should be followed by the username we're going to be using, which is cloud user, as you see it here, right? 
Now, one thing, and this may sound like superstitious witchcraft stuff, but when I've been doing copy paste of SSH key from bottom up, you know, when you go to the bottom, you scroll all the way up and paste it, the stuff has failed. Uh, so, just for witchcraft, I guess, when you are going to be doing the copy paste of the SSH key, or maybe this is something related on the Mac, it adds some strange characters, uh, who knows. So scroll, uh, go to the to the button of the SSH key, you know, do shift and then scroll all the way down, including cloud user, and then paste it here. If you don't have cloud, do cloud user in your keys, you need to make sure that that, that is what you have. The, the keys should be cre created for a user clo called uh, cloud-user. Now you can go always back by clicking on that hamburger and click home, right? And we need to go to the marketplace and look for QRadar. And here we have, you have your options. We're going to start with the console, so we click here. So at this point, we click on Launch on Compute Engine. And once again, that number is, is way too long. That's going to probably exceed the 64 characters. Again, not there, but when everything gets added up. So I'm just going to keep it short. I'm going to call jbravo-d as my deployment name. I'm going to select my network my region rather, which is this one. I left all these things uh, checked by default and I click deploy. I'm going to pause the video. This doesn't take very long at all, but I'm going to pause the video until it completes. So while that takes place, this is where we are. Keep in mind this, I took all the defaults in there, make sure that you know the, that all the ports are, uh, allows you to go, go to that image on port doing SSH and port uh, for HTTPS, right? Let's go back and see if that other part completed. Now, we need to set the internal and external IP addresses as static. So you go to the hamburger, compute engine, another way of navigating to it, if, if you go to the hamburger and hit home, here on the resources compute engine, when you click in here, you have your instance as well. So let me go there. I'm going to click the Edit button here to change those IP addresses. So you scroll down where it reads Network Interfaces, and by the way, once you are here, make sure you click here so you can access the console via HTTPS. Click here on the pencil. And notice that we're going to be changing both the IP address and the external IP, instead of uh, ephemeral, we're going to make it static. We don't want that to change. And then you need to put a name. I'm going to call it JB-D internal. Click Reserve. And we're going to do the same thing with the external IP address. Oh, we need to scroll down, all the way down here, and see what it reads, create IP. We're going to give it a name, JBD External, right? Then you reserve. And that's the IP address you're going to use when you want to go to the console after everything is installed to access the console. And also is the one that you're going to be doing SSH into as well. So both IP address you can actually 
copy this one. I'm, I'm deleting this project once uh, the video is done, but you can uh, make sure that you grab that uh, in here. Very important, once you've done that, click here on this Done button. Okay. So, we completed step 11, no, actually 10. Now we're going to do SSH, this command, Cloud User, remember that's the name we use, on the public address that we just set for the external access that we made it static. I put it in the clipboard and we're going to SSH into it. So I click in it. I already tested this and the first time that you go there it's going to ask you, you need to put yes uh, to uh, verify that that's what you want to do. You need to make sure that your host name, the fully qualified name is below 64 bytes. And remember we've been using very short names. Well, let me actually show you that if we do host name, but let's actually do for the fully qualified name. So we're going to do host names dash F. I'm going to send it to a pi and do a word count on the number of characters. And we have 56. Not much left to 64 or 63, right? So that's what is very important for you to keep all those names very short. Well, after all this, we are ready to issue the command. And this is similar to, at this point, to Azure and AWS. So we're going to paste that command. And this is going to take around 40, 45 minutes. I'm going to pause the video until that completes. And then we need to uh, put the password for the console. Let me pause the video until that gets there. 